Alrighty, hello again, friends. It's the end of the week, and we're finally back with more Rebel News. This is Rebel News for the week of March 3rd, 2024. What are And one thing I'd like to start with and kind of channel news is this segment i might uh have to start doing more on sundays i can't believe you've done uh, this just for personal schedule and life has changed around quite a bit recently but now i kind of have a uh, sunday's pretty open <laughs> and fortunately uh i got hopefully get more time with the waifu out at the range here in the future so looking forward to that okay and the first news item i'd like to get to is uh, another follow-up with the next Benedict case that we've been uh, following here. And kind of really one of the biggest updates this past week was the U.S. Education Secretary Miguel Cardona has uh, announced that they are conducting an investigation into the Owasso School District cons uh, regarding a potential violation of civil rights and an ongoing culture of bullying that seemed to exist within the Oklahoma school systems. So the, uh, the police investigation as to cause of death is still ongoing, but c clearly there's some uh, growing interest in terms of uh, investigation on a criminal level. And I find that kind of interesting. We'll see where it ends up. Police are still yet to uh, kind of finally announce the toxicology results. So there's quite a number of things we're waiting on, but I'll be sure to keep you posted. And getting out once again to international stuff. Uh, one story that was kind of the a big focus of this channel for a bit was uh, Operation Humanitarian and Security. That had, took place in the Al Hol camp in Syria, kind of close to the Iraqi border. And while that operation has since concluded, it was uh, taking place between the Syrian Defense Forces trying to out uh, ISIS from the camp itself that had turned it sort of into a stronghold. And anyway, following the operation itself, Iraq has announced that it will begin to repatriate uh, around 600 folks from that detention. Well, from the camp, the, the verbiage that gets used around the camp kind of depends on who it's referring to, whether it's a refugee or detention camp. But regardless, it was not a super pleasant place for anyone involved. And so it's good to see that at least some civilians are returning to a normal life, not uh, living under the thumb of ISIS every single day. And there were still several thousand more residents of that camp. Uh, it's undetermined if the whole thing's going to just be broken up and folks sent back to wherever they once came from. But uh, it is nice to see at least some progress being made towards this, which has been more or less an endemic problem for a decade or more. We've been tracking a number of escalating uh, conflicts throughout Africa, including out there in Somalia, you had, uh, Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo and senegal even with some election chaos and this past week in burkina faso around 170 folks were just summarily executed in three villages in the northern region and it seems this has been a continuing pattern of violence throughout the country less than half of it is really under government control of any sort so we can sort of add this to the list of countries in the region that are having some sort of spiraling security situation. Then moving further east, 
to Iran, sort of a big story with them this past week was their elections. They held a number of elections for their parliament, and considering there's been a large number of protests and uprisings in the country recently, folks expected that maybe some more moderates and uh, progressives might actually make it into parliament and lo and behold uh, was largely swept by the hyper nationalists and ultra conservatives uh i mean folks were upset by this but i guess you can't really be entirely surprised in a despotic theocracy that seems to not really be beholden or listened to its folks much um it should be also noted that this is a record low turnout for uh, elections in Iran. People tend to be pretty politically active there and just sort of out of protest. A lot of folks decided not to participate in this one. And I mean, maybe folks would argue that that, that didn't turn out well for them, but it, it is, it, I think it speaks to a uh, sort of, uh, perceived hopelessness among the population there where they feel perhaps that politic typical political vehicles for enacting change are no longer having the effect they once did if they ever had did at all and follow up to a story we brought up here before the pakistani elections while controversial have finally concluded and a uh, prime minister has been selected, Shibaz Sharif. Uh, I noted last time with this story that uh, Imran Khan, who is arguably one of the most pol popular politicians in uh, modern Pakistani history, was barred from running. And Shibaz uh, is actually a member of the same party. So in a... I guess a form of, of protest, if you will, the population of Pakistani uh, Pakistan spoke and said they still basic they wanted more or less the spirit of Imran Khan still in office. So despite attempts to uh, do anything possible to uh, dwindle the man's influence, uh, Khan still seems to be kicking. In the country, even if vicarious threes, uh, through the new Prime Minister Sharif. So I'm not expecting that to immediately result in anything too crazy, but we can see a, a, a shifting tide and sentiment that many might argue would be uh, anti Western or perhaps more so than it was in the past. For a little more backgrounder here, kind of what made the U.S. so mad at Khan to begin with, uh, it goes back to uh, 2022 when uh, I guess the United States was upset with Pakistan's uh, neutrality with Russia over the conflict in Ukraine. So because Khan was you know, more or less trying to take a neutral stance in that, we uh, ousted him. According to intelligence uh, obtained by The Intercept, I'm not sure that this is like the full story, but I feel like that gives us a pretty decent idea of why he uh, is generally considered, uh, you know, uh, anti again, anti-Western sentimental or sympathetic the last story i wanted to end with today is a bit of a palate cleanser kind of a pleasant one but the uh zagros film festival is taking place online it is a kurdish film festival that features a number of uh, recent kurdish films including in english subtitles and uh even has one of my all-time favorite films kobane in it you can actually uh, go to the website itself and view all, all the films. It's a pretty cool concept, kind of a big fan. And I got to say that uh, for what they lack in resources, 
Kurdish uh, and the Rojava uh, film folks have been put out some pretty crazy cool movies. Uh, I highly recommend Kobane for sure. I consider that one of my one of the best. Um, so at least that's something to leave you with that it's at least uh, a bit more positive and entertaining. But uh, look forward to more news bulletins on Sundays in the future. And stay awesome. You're cute. <laughs> Love you, fam. Bye.